Sooner or later, every one of us has to read a book we don't want to read. In fact, it's, it's sometimes the very assignment, the requirement, that turns us against the book. We might know absolutely nothing about the book, except we don't want to read it. Nonetheless, we must read it. Our very job or grade may depend on it. All these factors are going to make the book that much more difficult, unless, unless we can find a way to make it more bearable. Otherwise, you'll postpone the reading until either you fail the assignment or you turn to stone like this guy. So here's a formula for making it easier to read a book you don't want to read. I thought of it the other day when some tree surgeons came to my house to remove a towering 80-foot pine tree next to my house. To be more exact, it was a leaning pine. As you can see here, it was leaning and endangering my roof, my fence, my neighbor's tool shed, and another neighbor's fence and garage. As much as we all hated to sentence that old pine to death, there was too much riding on its tilt, especially when we thought about the weight of the snow that would be riding on it in another month. If we didn't take the tree down, Mother Nature might do it for us. And quite frankly, sometimes she's a little messy when she takes things down. So like that book you don't want to read, the tree had to be taken down. But because of its position tucked between the three houses, it had to come down very carefully. So we called the tree surgeons from the Paul Bunyan Wood Company. That actually was the name of the company, appropriately enough. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What does this have to do with your reading that dumb book you don't want to read? Bear with me here for a few more seconds. Tree surgeons never take down a tree this size all at once. They take it down piece by piece. By the same token, few people read an entire book in one evening or one sitting. They read it in pieces or sections, except, of course, for dumb people who think they can read and digest the whole book in one night, the night before the report or the assignment is due or the test is to be taken. Watch. The tree surgeons arrived with their crane and equipment, and the first thing they did was to stabilize the truck the truck that would hold the crane, that would hold the bucket, that would hold the tree surgeon. They made sure they were on stable ground. When you're reading, you need to stabilize yourself first. Unfortunately, too many folks think that means getting as comfortable as possible, like this guy, which often puts you to sleep. Here's a fact. When the feet are elevated to the same level as the heart, the heart pumps less oxygen to the brain, and that brings on drowsiness. The lesson here, get comfortable and stable, but not too comfortable, and keep those feet lower than your heart if you want to stay awake. The next thing the tree surgeon does is cut away the lower part of the tree's branches one by one. Basically, what he's going to do is break the tree into sections and bring it down section by section. And that's the approach you can take with a book that you don't want to read. Read a chapter today, another tomorrow, and then the day after. If the chapters are long, break the 200 pages into five-page, ten-page sections. In less than a month, you'll have it read. See that bucket the tree guy is using to maneuver in and around the pine tree? That's a whole lot safer and easier than the old climbing boots they had to use when they were climbing the tree. And just as the mobile bucket makes the job easier, the job of reading the book is made a whole lot easier by the fact that it, too, is entirely mobile or portable. It's like an iPod, a cell phone. You can bring it with you wherever you think there'll be some downtime. We all get 24 hours every day, regardless of our age or our job. One of the big differences in people is that some people get the most out of their 24 hours while others waste huge chunks of it, and then they wonder why they're so far behind. A book really is a kind of vehicle. It'll go as fast or as slow as you, the reader, want. It gets some of its energy from the author, but even more from Y-O-U, the reader. Without the reader, the book isn't going to get read, no matter how talented the author. With the tree being sliced into small pieces and then lowered to the ground, there's no danger of it landing on the buildings or the fences, as long as the surgeon is careful to secure the pieces he's cutting. In much the same way, when you're reading the book, if you're not paying attention, 
If you've got other things on your mind, you'll end up damaging your understanding. The tree surgeons were not listening to their iPods, or taking cell phone calls, or even drinking coffee. Not that you can't snack while reading. I'm talking about the, the other things, the distractions, like phones, pagers, television, and sometimes music. The more you're distracted, the less you'll understand. Imagine if that guy were taking phone calls from his wife or kids. If he was, I wouldn't want to be working beneath him. Try to cut yourself off from environmental distractions during the time you're reading. Some people can listen to music while reading or doing homework, but others cannot. The decision is yours, but be honest with yourself. If it's distracting, cut it out. Needless to say, the surgeon needs the tools of his trade. So too with reading. One of the great American minds of the last century, a guy named Mortimer Adler, once observed that you should never read a book without a pencil in your hand or a pen. If it's a library book, use post-it notes. I'm not saying that you should take notes all the way through the book, although sometimes that's necessary. Think of those notes as a conversation with the author. The words printed on the page are the author's words directed to you, his part of the conversation. Your note in the margin or on the post-it note is your response to what the author wrote. Believe it or not, this activity reinforces understanding. By adding a physical activity as small as note writing, you're engaging an extra part of your brain. The more active the brain, the more you remember and the less likelihood you'll fall asleep. That note-taking helps you digest the reading, much the way the tree surgeons take those branches they've trimmed and feed them into a wood chipper device that turns it all to sawdust and chips. The more you think about whatever you read, the better you can turn it into memory and ideas. When the surgeon was on the lower branches, he couldn't see much of the surrounding area, could he? But the higher he climbed, the more he saw. The same thing happens in a book. We're often confused in the early pages or chapters, not always sure of who's who and what's what, but the more we read, the more the plot and the characters come into focus. Just as the tree guy can't expect instant results, the reader shouldn't expect to understand the whole book by chapter two. After all, a good author wants to keep you in some suspense. One of the best lifetime habits you can develop is reading in bed. I know that seems to contradict what I said earlier about the feet being level with the heart, but hear me out. When you read in bed, usually it's not for comprehension. This is reading done to relax you, to help you slip into a good night's sleep. Pure pleasure. You could call it a kind of night school. You're training the brain to associate reading with a non-threatening, pleasurable experience. That's great training. I might add, the brighter the bulb in your reading lamp, the longer you can read without your eyes growing tired. So if you're interested in falling asleep easier and earlier, keep the light or the bulb turned to the dimmer setting when you read. Out of bed, the brighter the bulb, the less work your eye muscles have to do and the less tired they get. Simple. In summary, when you've got a book to read you don't want to read, approach it like that old leaning pine tree. Take it down piece by piece, branch by branch, chapter by chapter, or page by page. You'll be surprised how much easier it is than waiting until the night before the assignment is due or the test must be taken.